Sometimes I like to use the intense translucence as a wash on the bisque. This piece has not been coated with any base coat, it's just bisque. And I've got a little bit of uh, topaz, orange, and evergreen in the tangerine and evergreen. And I'm watering it down a little bit. I just like the way that it soaks into the bisque and makes an interesting wash. So now I am dry brushing a little bit of opaque white, caramel, and warm beige mixed on my brush. I put it on the stiff round brush. This is a Kimple Creative Paradise brush and it's a nice brush for dry brushing a big area like this. This is a size 8. And what you do when you dry brush is you Put a little bit of the um, opaque stain in your brush. Wipe a lot of it back out of the tips of the hairs. And then your goal here is just to hit the high areas. We'll hit a little bit of the low areas too. But it's going to give a lot more texture than if I just painted and wasn't dry brushing over a color. And I use these three colors, uh, just kind of mix them in my brush um, to add a little bit of depth. I think it's getting a little bit too white, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the caramel into my brush. And you'll notice I'm kind of stippling in every which direction. The main thing that I see people do uh, that affects their dry brushing is either adding too much paint or not enough paint. If you don't add enough paint, you start to get a chalky finish. If you add too much, you're just covering up too much of your base coat. And again, you'll notice that I'm not worried about the hands at this time. I'm going to base coat them and paint them after I'm done with the background. What I've done now is I've taken my um, original three colors that I washed with, the tangerine, the evergreen, and the um, topaz and put a little bit on a soap dish palette. This is Creative Paradise Mold, by the way. Comes in really handy for a palette. And I'm going to take one of our intense translucent brushes. These are, tech, these are um, cat's tongue brushes that are made out of uh, natural hair. They work really great with the intense translucence and they have a nice point on them. And I'm going to Add a little bit of water into my little soap dish and create a real loose, runny color in the soap dish. And I'm going to angle the mold a little bit, I mean the bisque piece. And just have some of the color coming down. It's kind of floating. Uh, in floating, you usually use a square brush and load one side of the brush with color and the other with water, and I'm not doing that. And so 
I don't know if this is technically floating, but it's just putting a little bit of color here and there on the background to add some age and some interest. Nice thing about it is if you add too much, you can wipe it off or wash it off. I always like to think that what happens, happens. And it was probably meant to be like that. Add a little bit of warmth here in these areas. Maybe if we add a little bit of color around where the lettering is, it'll emphasize the words. We're going to come back at the end and paint into the words. And we're going to paint this outside rim with an opaque metallic. So, again, totally subjective. I'm coming back with this dry brush just because, you know, just something I feel like doing, taking a little bit of the color out of the center area. And so, there is our aged stucco look. Now that I'm happy with the background of the cross, I'm going to use one of my small cat tongue brushes and base coat the hand. I might come in first and um, add a little bit of this background color. I'm just going to leave these, the sleeves, pretty loose. I'll come in and dry brush them a little bit, but I want them to just barely be base coated. Now I'm going to base coat the hand with um, the color that I had out earlier, which is warm beige. I'm just going to try and very carefully get primarily the hand. Now, what I think I'll do to let this base coat dry just a little bit, I'm going to dry brush the sleeve a little bit with some white and caramel that I had out earlier from the background. Put a little bit of white and a little bit of caramel in my brush. Wipe it back out. And this is a size three. And you can see how when you dry brush um, the low areas stay the base coat color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some opaque stain as a wash similarly to the way I did the um, intense translucent earlier. I just need a little bit of water And I'm going to use this is rich brown diluted a lot and I'm just gonna kind of wash into the low areas of the hand Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush back with that original base coat, which was warm beige. And what this does is it just adds a bit of interest to your ceramic piece. If you just were base coating and not antiquing and not dry brushing, the piece doesn't come to life as well as it does if you dry brush over a base coat. Usually the base coat is a shade or two darker 
than the color that you're going to dry brush. So that's why I applied that rich brown into the low areas. You can see that it's shadowed itself pretty good. After I finished the background dry brushing the hands and putting a little bit of dry brush on the collar, on the sleeve, sorry, I spray. I took the piece to our airbrush booth and I sprayed it with our Intense Translucent Perfect Matte Spray. It's a matte fixative and I did that for a couple reasons. One, the Intense Translucent that's here, it sets it and makes it permanent. But another reason I did it is it helps us to do the lettering and I'll show you in a second what I mean. I also dry brush, I'm base coated the outside edge of the cross with our uh, 971 gold mixed with a little bit of the new penny copper. It's an opaque stain um, and I did most of it so that you wouldn't have to watch but I, I will show you. And so I put a little bit of the gold and a little bit of the copper in my brush. And the reason I did that is I thought that copper was too orange looking all by itself. And I thought that the gold was a bit too uh, mild mannered and yellow. And so together they kind of make an old gold. And so what I can do is I'll put a little bit of the gold on like this. And you see it's a nice coverage. And then I can come in with a little bit of copper just here and there. Make it fade in and out a little bit. Now, I think I want to add a little bit of, of the gold to the hand area. And what I'm going to do that with that is I'm going to use a little bit of water in my brush that has the copper and gold in it. And I'm just kind of float some here and there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to show you the lazy person's way to paint lettering. I could come in with a tiny little liner and paint each letter, but who wants to do that? I'm going to instead come in with some rich brown diluted with some water and just get the basic area like this. And because I did use the perfect matte spray on that background area, I'm going to be able to uh, moisten the Q-tip and wipe it back like so. And it leaves the letter, it leaves the color basically down in the lettering area. And we'll do the same to the top lettering. Thank you.